Okay, we're done with the basics of spirit science, and um, so far we've learned absolutely nothing useful. I'm starting to suspect spirit science isn't actually science at all. But since we're done with the basics now, I figured I'm going to change the format just to keep things running a little smoother, because I don't want to make one video per lesson. Uh, I'm never going to get through it in that case. So, uh, I'm gonna look at two parts today, five and six. The Dogons have a cave on their land that stretches back into a mountain, and in this cave are drawings over 700 years old. Now, the brightest star in the sky to us is called Sirius, now called Sirius A. They have a diagram of not just Sirius' rotational pattern, but a small star orbiting it. They say it's very, very old and very small, and made out of the heaviest matter in the universe. They also knew about the other planets in their solar system, including Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Yeah, 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 sure. Aliens told them, I know. Um, it's interesting that uh, 700 years ago, the aliens had the same uh, misconceptions about astronomy that uh, the people who studied the Dogons did. I mean, they thought Pluto was a planet, and there's absolutely no way super advanced aliens who could just as easily have discovered Eris and Sedna and Kalwar would ever think that Pluto was a planet, unless they also considered those planets. Um, it's interesting that they told them about the rings of Saturn, but not the rings of the other gas giants. And it's interesting that they told the Dogon how many moons those planets have, but neglected to count those that were discovered after Robert Temple's book about this. By the way, that book, The Serious Mystery, uh, was loosely based on a study made by anthropologist Marcel Griol, a study which has been replicated by Walter Van Beek, and he was not able to reproduce the results. In fact, the Dogon don't know what the hell Griol was talking about. Van Beek's paper is available for free online, and I'm linking to it in the description. Part 2. How old is the Sphinx? There's no clear consensus about exactly when the Sphinx was built, but most Egyptologists believe it was built around uh, 2500 BCE. Toward the back of the Sphinx, there are cuts 12 feet deep into the surface. This pattern appears to be smoothed by water. The last time that there was water in the Egypt area was over 12,000 years ago. Yeah, I looked into it, and uh, yeah, I'll agree that the water erosion hypothesis does have some evidence working for it, but it is rejected by most Egyptologists. And one major reason is that um, if the Sphinx is 12,000 years old, why are the oldest Egyptian artifacts 5,000 years old? It's like there's 7,000 years worth of missing stuff. Where are the tools? Where are the buildings? I mean, just doesn't make sense. But at the same time, the water erosion doesn't make sense, so there seems like there has to be some other explanation, but then what would that explanation be? We simply don't know. So I think, instead of jumping to conclusions, we should just accept that at this time, we don't have all the answers. The Sphinx is in the shape of a lion. If it were built when Egyptologists say it was, that would be only 2,500 years ago, while the constellation of Taurus was in the sky. The only logical time for the Sphinx to be built when it was, was when the constellation Leo was in the sky. Really? Did you consider this? I am your pharaoh and I desire a statue with the body of a lion and the head of a human because that seems really cool and I am your king and I am a God incarnated, so uh, you will do as I command. Now get cracking, peasants. What? A lion? Now? Oh, no, listen to me. That simply will not do. A lion? This is the age of Taurus. A lion simply will not match the stars. It, it, no, no, no. Listen to me, Pharaoh, darling. A bull statue. Now that would be absolutely fab. You know, <laughs> Now scientific circles are actually beginning to look at the words of Plato in a new light when he talked about another culture, another continent, from a dim past called Atlantis. What scientific circles? Source, please. We know it was not done by hairy barbarians, but by a very sophisticated culture. 
Yes, the Egyptians were very sophisticated. And if you're talking about a pre-Egyptian civilization, well, where's the evidence that there was a pre-Egyptian civilization in Egypt? It has kept being put under the table. You do realize that claiming that there's a conspiracy to keep the evidence hidden doesn't magically rid you of the burden of proof, right? In fact, now you still have to present the evidence and also present evidence that there is a conspiracy to keep that evidence hidden. You're just making it harder for yourself. Now we have the accepted evidence that there absolutely had to be someone on Earth who was highly civilized as early as 10,000 years ago. Great! What is it? And where can I find it? And who is it accepted by? Because so far all you've done is talk about a hypothesis that isn't widely accepted. Part 3. Earth Relations to the Cosmos The Earth actually has a wobble. Well, it has many wobbles, but the one I'd like to talk about today is the one called the Precession of the Equinox. The point actually points to and away from the center of the galaxy. As we hit position A, we begin waking up. And as we hit position C, we begin to fall asleep. See, when we were the ancient Egyptians, Sumerians, and Mayans and such, we were incredibly wise. Look, they were humans. They knew some stuff. They discovered some stuff. They also got a lot of things wrong. Then we got dumber and became all philosophical. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 let me see if I get this straight. Philosophy is dumb. Uh, thinking about stuff is dumb. Learning how to reason is dumb. This is where things like the Fibonacci sequence and pi and the golden ratio were discovered. Yeah, we got dumber and discovered math, and we got even dumber and discovered science, and we got even dumber and created all this technology that somehow works despite the fact that we're so stupid we can't do anything useful because, you know, we're dumb. Many of those who follow New Age beliefs will tell you that we're moving into the age of Aquarius, but not many people know what that means. This is a chart showing the precession scale with our constellations. The astronomical sign that we see in the sky when we hit point A will be that of Aquarius. Are you ready for this, the big finisher? Can you guess when we're going to hit point A exactly? That's impossible to say because uh, constellations don't have any natural boundaries. They are completely arbitrary and there are many different systems in use. If we use the boundaries defined by the International Astronomical Union, it'll be in 2597. But if we listen to astrologers, it can be anything from 1400 to 3600. But let me guess what you're gonna say. December 21st... Ugh. Are you still going with that? Anyway, moving on to part 6. What we're going to be looking at today is the pattern of creation. Essentially what this means is that everything in the universe comes out of this single pattern. Yeah, let's speed this up because this is gonna take a while. He's talking about this pattern, the flower of life. Draw a circle, then draw an identical circle centered on the circumference of the first one. Draw a third one centered on one of the two intersections of the first two. Repeat until you've gone all the way around and you can keep going even further if you like to. You'll get a pattern resembling a flower in the middle of each circle. You'll also notice that we drew seven circles. Genesis, anyone? Of course, the funny thing is that the flower and the seven days... They're not in there. They're imposed by the observer through association. If you don't know about Genesis, there's nothing special about seven circles. If you don't know what a flower is, you're sure as hell not going to associate this with life. Another image that comes out of this pattern is this. It's called the Tree of Life. No, that's not part of the pattern. Look, if you get to add things to the pattern or remove things from it, then you're gonna find anything in there. But that's true with absolutely any pattern you can imagine. You're not finding anything in there, you're just using your imagination. And I can do the exact same thing, see? Now, any argument you might have as to why this hand flipping you off isn't actually found in the flower of life, well, I can make the exact same argument for the tree of life, or the fruit of life, or Metatron's cube, or whatever else you might find in there. What are those things, you ask? Brace yourselves. Finish the drawing, add the final missing circles, giving you this. 
This image is the fruit of life. What you do is draw a straight line from the very center of every single circle to every other circle in this image. When you do this, you get an image which is known throughout the universe, everywhere, as Metatron's cube. Everywhere in the universe, huh? Care to back that up? So what is Metatron's cube? Well, anyone who has studied sacred geometry, or even regular geometry for that matter, knows that there are five unique shapes in the universe. No, there's an infinite number of unique shapes. They are called the platonic solids. Oh, so what you mean is there are five distinct shapes that meet the criteria for a platonic solid. Why didn't you say that straight away? This knowledge is also where original alchemy came from. The ancient alchemists and great souls like Pythagoras, father of Greece, considered each shape to have an elemental aspect to them. The classical elements? They're not elements. And alchemy? The science that that's based around all this? Yeah, that's um, that was rendered obsolete by chemistry. In addition, the association of platonic solid to element is completely arbitrary. There is no way to prove that fire should relate to a tetrahedron. And um, you might also notice that uh, fire isn't in Metatron's cube. It's the flower all over again. Alright, I'm gonna wrap up with something I think you'll enjoy. Do you believe in aliens? Not the kind that visits us. Would you believe me if I flat out told you that aliens have been coming to Earth and helping us for a very long time now? Um... That's not an alien, Jordan. That's a crop circle. They're made by humans. The people who started it told the whole world how they did it, and since then pranksters have been repeating it, making them more and more elaborate. Uh, in this case, uh, New Agers clearly made a pattern that has some significance within New Age. Um, they made it in some farmer's field, and unless they had that farmer's permission, they just destroyed private property. That's illegal. I hear most farmers press charges. See you next time.